Right now, there are three different types of preps that people overseas who are surviving in that zone right now are specifically asking for. And those requests are coming through groups here in the United States that are trying to send support over that way. Specifically, the UALI, which are Americans of similar descent out of Long Island. And those different prep categories are things that you and I should focus on based on the fact that that's what they're asking for over in an SHTF environment right now. And we should definitely be aware of the fact that we might need the exact same things if something like that were to ever happen here. And if you're preparing for an SHTF scenario and you're seeing what's happening overseas right now and you want to adapt to the new situation, then hit the subscribe button below because we'll keep trying to get any information we can from what's going on over there and apply it to our own preparedness. Now, the first thing that they are specifically asking for, and they definitely need this more than anything else, is additional medical supplies. First aid is huge. And basically, they're having a hard time treating their injuries and wounds after the fact more so than just immediate first aid. A lot of people out there have IFACs and are ready to go in case of a blowout situation or anything along those lines, but they don't have long-term sustainable wound care because it's not something that we often think about. We want to take care of ourselves in the immediate and then eventually find medical help, but they're in a situation over there where their medical facilities no longer exist in many ways and they have to take care of themselves. Now, this is a quote from an article from the Medium from one of the aid workers for the UALI that says many people are getting injured and do not have the proper supplies to care for their injuries right now. And this was Helena Fachenko. And basically she has two cousins that are fighting over there right now and she tries to stay in contact with her relatives but understands very soon she probably won't be able to. So she works with the UALI who is then trying to get this different form of aid out to the people in that region and doing her best to get what it is they need and communicate with them to see what it is that they're wishing for. First aid's number one, and they need ways to treat their wounds after the fact more than they need immediate first aid in the sense of like an IFAC blowout kit. So just keep in mind that this is one of the reasons why I work with companies like Refuge Medical, who has awesome emergency first aid kits. Their Adventure 2.0 kit is like the full package. If you took it anywhere with you on a road trip or on a camping trip or something like that, you'd be set for the entire time. And then they also have their wound care bucket, which is more specifically what they need over there right now in the sense of treating those wounds long-term after the fact. A lot of people don't realize how much gauze you will need in that situation. And then they're also specifically asking for antibiotic ointment, which there is some in the wound care bucket, but I also grabbed some of my other ointment stash just to kind of show you an example of what it is they really need. Bandages and ointment is like number one and number two for what they're requesting. Of course, any first aid or medical supplies is welcome, but what they really need is wound dressing. So, and if you wanna check out Refuge Medical, go over to their website, refugemedical.com. You can use the code MAGIC, you get 10% off. They have amazing first aid gear put together by Americans here in America, made by Americans. So you can't really go wrong, but if they need this stuff so badly over there, Imagine what we'll need here if we ever experience anything similar. And do you actually have enough gauze and bandages and ointment to treat wounds for the long term rather than just a tourniquet and some you know, chest seals for an immediate blowout scenario? Those are things you need to ask yourself now and learn from this situation. Now the second thing they're asking for, this makes a lot of sense because it's not just for those who are involved in combat or something like that, but they're asking for body armor. They want ways to protect themselves when they're out and about getting things done, even if they're not personally involved with the conflict. And that body armor is a big deal because basically they're worried about being shot at. Even if they aren't necessarily an aggressor, they still are somebody who's in a conflict zone and they know that that possibility exists. So body armor is something that they're asking for and they're probably not getting very much of because people don't just give away body armor. But that should tell you that having body armor isn't always about being some kind of operator or having a plate carrier to go look super tactical and have all your reloads and stuff with. Sometimes it's just about being able to be a little bit more protected in a hot conflict zone when you're just trying to get from point A to point B and have no idea whether or not you're gonna be shot at in the 
an interim, right? So these are things to consider. Uh, Mira Safety has excellent body armor. They have level four ceramic plates, which will basically stop any kind of small arms round you can think of. And they fit in generally almost any universal plate carrier. So Mira Safety is excellent. I have links to all this stuff below in the description as well as in the pinned comment because it's important. I also work with Premier Body Armor who has excellent gray man status body armor solutions, which I will have an awesome video coming out about that very soon here, but they have discount codes for you guys too down in the description. These are things you should definitely be considering because look, it's not always about being tactical. It's not always about getting out there and being a hard target and you know, an overwhelming force or anything like that. Sometimes it's literally about going to check on grandma and knowing that the possibility of getting shot in that, you know, distance traveled is highly likely and just wanting a way to try to mitigate any of that risk. So that's what they're asking for over there, right? So first aid and body armor. Wow, self-preservation it sounds like to me. Makes sense, doesn't it? Now the third thing they're asking for is a no-brainer, but you will be surprised by how many people are lacking in this department in many ways. And that is work boots or tactical boots or combat boots, right? They want boots that can just handle hard abuse that are probably somewhat waterproof and have the ability to get them through without ruining their feet. And this is something that they are asking for and they don't have enough of. How many people don't own work boots? or even tactical boots or anything like that, right? These are some Danner hunting boots. They're amazing boots. I find them very comfortable. And in fact, I usually suggest people look for hunting boots because honestly, they're really comfortable. They're made to traverse just about any terrain and they put a lot of effort into making sure that you can be on your feet for a very long period of time while tracking something like large game and you never know how far you're gonna have to go versus you know, even some of like the cheaper tactical boots and stuff like that can be a little bit more uncomfortable over long periods of time and are usually more meant for like an urban environment. So things that you would wanna consider in the sense of footwear they're asking for right now. And I was at a training class recently where a lot of people didn't have proper footwear. And you'd be surprised if you were to impromptu go on a hike right now with the people that are closest to you, how many of them would not have the proper footwear, not have any kind of boots, let alone combat work or hunting boots of any kind, and at the same time show up wearing, I don't know, flip flops or maybe uh, some Crocs, right? This would actually happen, I guarantee you. So make sure you prioritize footwear because that's super important. And honestly, like Danner's a great company, Red Wing is great. I wear a lot of high quality boots. I've even bought some boots from Victos recently for winter because they had some insulated boots that I thought were you know, practical and they were actually really nice and have held up very well. So there's some great companies out there that you can get footwear from, but at the end of the day, just make sure you have some sort of high quality boot because that's what they're asking for over there right now. And if it comes down to just taking the information we have based on what's going on overseas and applying it to our own preparedness, I mean, that's the best thing we can do with what's happening over there right now. That situation, you know, is terrible. It's not something that anyone wants to have happen. And regardless of who's at fault or what happened, at the end of the day, there's innocent people there that are having a very, very hard time surviving now. And these are the things they're asking for. You would expect a lot of other stuff, right? But at the end of the day, it all comes down to survival and self-preservation. And you know what allows for that? First aid, a way to protect yourself like body armor, and a way to keep moving on your feet like quality boots. And those are the things they want, and these are the things you should take a look at in your own inventory and ask yourself whether or not you're good to go. So, like I said, I'll have some links in the description and stuff, just stuff to help you guys out, give you some direction, but there's a lot of other options out there, so do what you will with it. But honestly, be honest with yourself, Find out if you actually have enough of these things and if you could actually even afford to send some of these things overseas to help other people. Because if you can't, you probably don't have enough for yourself. Let's be honest, all right? So, anything else to say about the three preps they really need over there right now, which should tell you something. That's going to be it for Magic Prepper. Yeah,